Hello, I'm JW, and it's another fuse box, uh, another wooden cased item. Actually, they're varnished there and uh, open back, as is fairly typical with these things. So uh, let's have a look inside this one. So there's another one of these wooden uh, cased fuse boxes, and uh, so it's got the usual uh, paint and whatever on the sides there. Just a couple of hinges on this side, and again, the uh, nicely made corners and everything, as was typical with these things. Bit of a uh, hack out bit there, obviously, where the wiring would have entered and just a little catch on the end there to secure the thing closed. Now this particular one is made by uh, GEC, or the uh, General Electric Company, and that's the uh, General Electric Company of England, of course, not the uh, American company with a similar name. And uh, might be able to just about see the uh, logo in the lid there. It's a bit uh, faded there, but uh, basically GEC and uh, made in England. Now this is another one of these double pole uh, things, so you've got the uh, six fuses at the top here and then the uh, corresponding six at the bottom which would be for the uh, neutral and of course there's a bit of ceramic uh, to be broken there but uh, the rest of it is uh, fully intact. And the uh, fuses themselves are uh, just moulded ceramic pieces and the wire just goes through the centre there and obviously comes out the other side so it's actually fully enclosed other than the little pieces at the end and uh, so to uh, what looks to be uh, copper terminals there, which just press into the two spring terminals in the bottom. Now all these fuses uh, appear to be the same, they essentially have at the bottom 10 slash 15 amps, and uh, the word minor at the top, which would be the uh, brand that we're using. And in the middle here there's a small uh, magnet symbol. Uh, the uh, brand magnet was uh, used extensively by uh, GEC for all kinds of electrical equipment, and uh, fuse boxes of course being one of those. And so all the fuses just pull out of here, they're secured to the uh, wooden background with just a single screw in the centre. And then the top screw here connects to the uh, bus bar which goes along the top. And the incoming power is located behind these little ceramic pieces. And so you've just got the uh, screw there and of course the wires would come in and then that just goes across the whole width of uh, all six fuses. And similar thing at the bottom here, which would be say for the neutral or whichever line or neutral on. One of the others, so unfortunately this piece is actually broken, but nevertheless it would have been the same as the other one originally. Note on this one there's a substantial amount of blackening where something has obviously failed in some unpleasant fashion. And again the fuses are pretty much the same as the ones on the top. Now I've just removed all the fuses there and if I just tip this up you can see that these have had a pretty hard life in certain cases, for example here. You can see there's an extensive amount of uh, copper residue there and burning, and the same here, and again a bit of uh, blackening down on that bottom one, and also these two here at the bottom, uh, this one and this one over here. So uh, fairly obviously uh, fuses have definitely been blowing in this uh, on a fairly regular basis, and uh, clearly uh, it was obviously wired for both poles at the time that this actually happened. I'd say that uh, in there is clearly uh, extremely uh, well coated with sort of copper residue and uh, burnt bits of who knows what. And there's a closer look at the uh, destruction and damage in the bottom there. And uh, notice it's mainly all on the bottom side. Uh, if we actually turn it the other way, uh, see there is some on the top there, but uh, it's far less than actually on the uh, corresponding side there. And again over here, that's fairly clean on those three. And again, those two uh, considerable considerable amount of damage on the outer pair there. And again on those they've got a fair similar amount on the other end as well. Now both rows of fuses are essentially the same. We've got the power would come in in the centre here just fixed by that screw there. And this will either be the line or the neutral with the other row below being the corresponding other. So line here and neutral there or the other way around wouldn't actually make a huge difference. And uh, they're screwed onto this uh, wooden piece at the back with this central screw. So we should be able to just remove that. And then the top piece here is what uh, obviously screwed through onto the uh, bus bar behind, and then your outgoing circuit would connect at the bottom here. Now it appears that these are actually hooked around the square section uh, bar at the back, so if we just take out the one at this end, it might be a bit easier to remove and see what's behind. So get a single wood screw in the centre there, just to hold it to the wood on the back, and then hopefully that will unscrew in there. Okay, 
so the whole terminal actually just comes out with the uh, basically uh, stamped out uh, copper there and the single screw in the centre. And then this here will uh, uh, just slides off the end. So yeah, it's actually just a uh, hole on either side. So the only way to get off here would be by uh, sliding off. So uh, you'd have to actually remove all of these to take them off uh, one at a time. And at the back here, there's obviously brass uh, with a uh, threaded hole in the centre. And you see that just goes all the way across, connecting to all the terminals at the same time. And the uh, ceramic piece, so again, you've just got the top here where that uh, bar would have gone through, single hole to secure it to the wooden piece at the back. And then this is the outgoing terminal here. So you'd simply loosen the screw there, and the circuit wiring would connect in the back there via that hole. And of course the uh, fuse then would just plug in the centre and connect between the two terminals with the fuse wire inside. Now these are uh, totally enclosed, which is uh, quite unusual for one to this sort of age. They're normally sort of stretched over the back, but as you see the wire attaches to the uh, end here, and then it goes through that central hole, which obviously goes through and then comes out the other side. And you see it's, there's no uh, access to it on the top or on the back either. Now here's a closer look at the uh, small components from the fuse. So we've got the two small screws there, which are brass, and uh, two small brass washers. And the actual contacts are appear to be copper, so just uh, pressed out and folded round with a single hole in the centre there. And of course they fit over the corresponding pieces on the ceramic holder, so it just fits over the top of the piece there. Here's the uh, ceramic component, and uh, as you can see there we've got the uh, small uh, magnet logo in there with GEC, and it's basically a magnet with a couple of turns of wire around it. And the other side is just uh, made in England. And that tile, you've got the uh, part number there. Uh, the top is glazed, the uh, back is not. And see, that's just where the two uh, copper pieces go over there. And the fuse wire goes through that central tube. Now, it's obviously uh, moulded as the ceramic, but there's obviously some other piece of material in there. It's not entirely clear what that actually is, and it doesn't come out either, so it's pretty well uh, stuffed in there. But uh, some kind of uh, insulating or uh, similar material, maybe some sort of uh, fibre cloth or asbestos cloth or something perhaps, but uh, anyway, it's uh, pretty well uh, stuck in there. So, of course, the fuse wire just goes through, and then it's actually almost totally enclosed. The only parts being exposed are the very short piece here between the hole and the screw terminal on the top. This is the uh, actual holder from the box itself. And at this end here, we've got the terminal for where the fixed wiring would be attached, and that would just go in via the hole at the back here. And that would have to go off to the uh, circuit, so whatever that was. And again, it's a brass uh, post there, and just a sort of folded piece of uh, copper there to take the terminal from the actual fuse holder. And again, this end is where the uh, bar would fit in, which is brass, and that would just slot through the uh, holes there. And then the last terminal will just screw in through the top and uh, fix to that. And the central hole there just to uh, screw it to the wooden background. And in the centre here we've just got the ratings there, so 250 volts and 10 or 15 amps. And the back we've just got a single screw there which holds the uh, terminal in on the top there. The uh, magnet logo again, made in England, uh, vitreous and the part number. This is the ceramic terminal cover. And you can see it's just a single piece of uh, ceramic. And part number on the back there, and glazed on the front, and just secured with a single uh, screw in the centre. Has that black uh, sort of thumb wheel type thing on the top to secure it in. And again, you've got the magnet uh, symbol here, and made in England at the top. And just fits through the centre there to secure it in place. And this is the whole one. Unfortunately, the other one is uh, broken with a piece missing, but of course it would have been the same uh, when it was actually made and original. Now I've got this GEC uh, catalogue here from the 1930s, and uh, this isn't the exact one, but it's uh, as close as we're, we're going to be getting. And uh, let's have a look in there at the uh, teak cased variety, which is uh, listed at the top here. 
now you see it's essentially the same uh, sort of style fuse holders with the two rows though this has a uh, wooden separator between the rows but uh, it's pretty much the same sort of idea and it did come in a six-way version as you can see down here the uh, part number S uh, 26 and the uh, dimensions here are actually the size of the uh, one we've got here so uh, 9 by 6 and uh, two and a half inches uh, thickness uh, this price of that was uh, 14 shillings and four pence and uh, say tea can they also do them in a uh, pressed steel version as well and again it's the uh, minor one which is actually marked on the uh, fuses that we had uh, within that one there and as you see there they're pretty much the same uh, general design there so although it might not be this exact model it's uh, certainly uh, incredibly close to that and so just the catalogue is uh, actually dated uh, September 1935 so sort of towards the latter part of uh, 35 there so it's going to be the sort of age this uh, particular box came from and again it's double pole fusing so it has to be uh, prior to the 1950s and in say, reality it's going to be uh, considerably older than that so there's another six-way fuse box there the uh, GEC minor and uh, ceramic fuses inside and apparently a solid teak case which uh, of course seems very extravagant these days but uh, of course in the 1930s or whenever that was uh, probably the normal thing to be using although they did also make the uh, pressed steel versions and the uh, catalogue here so it's quite a uh, substantial thing it's uh, sort of 900 pages and some and uh, here's a uh, much better view of that uh, catalogue page and I can see the uh, six-way version is uh, listed there and the uh, size inch is, uh, is actually uh, complying with the fuse box we have so it's certainly uh, very similar if not the exact same one and as you can see there the uh, pressed steel version was very similar the uh, picture of the teak one is slightly different to the uh, one we've got here though of course that's only showing the four-way version on the picture there but uh, the fuse holders uh, certainly look to be identical and it was marked with minor as it shows in the catalogue as well so it's certainly uh, very close to that one if not the exact same one but uh, until next time thanks for watching